Oh, oh hey, here we go. Speed. Oh, yeah. This... I don't know why they say speed. Because uh, they're big fans of drugs and or DC classic superheroes. Or the movie. The movie classic. Speed with Keanu Reeves. Or the movie Speed 2, Cruise Control. The one where he tells... Was it like Steven Tobolowsky to like repeat everything I say on the phone? And he's like, fuck me. And he's like, oh, oh darn. <laughs> yes. That shit was lit. That's, <laughs> speed's a quality movie. So welcome to Stag Venturism. Yeah. Uh, we haven't come up with an intro yet. We, we, no, our intro is uh, us. We start, so actually, I thought of a neat new segment as you have thought of new segments on excellent. first episodes. Excellent. We're going to change it up. We're, it's time for a new segment, folks. It's time for a new segment. Uh, this segment is, before we get into what we're snacking on as snack venturists ourselves. Uh, you say this like it's foregone, like it's a given that they know this. We have to tell them what this is. They don't know what this is yet. Oh, okay. I, I suppose. This is snack venturism. Snack venturism. Yeah we take snack adventures we do and they're very easy maybe we that's can... our maybe that's our intro what i like about snack ventures is i can do them from a seated position yes um in the comfort of everywhere so you have a new segment i have a segment for us to get kind of started into this which is unrelated so we're going to try a lot of different snacks on this series uh this episode we have a very fancy candy that you brought to us but uh, I was thinking about most of the time you don't get to. If I had a nickel for every time someone said that I have, I have, we oh, have a fancy candy that you've brought to us, you would have at least 35 nickels. The segment idea is that we're going to do interesting, kind of unique snacks, maybe homemade snacks, pot snacks, kind of things. But like a lot of the time in society, we just got a snack on the convenient things. So this was actually lightly inspired by you. And what it is, is I would like you to name your favorite drive through snack. Uh, Are we talking like recently? You, yeah, like I, I'm not expecting moment, you to emotionally likely. search your soul and history and past. Well, no, I mean, like, I've got like some all time favorites. You've got some all time favorites, but let's, do, let's like, talk, let's, rather than favorite, let's say go to. You're, you're hungry, currently, you don't want to get out of your car. Currently, what do you go to for a drive through snack? If I just want a snack, mm -hmm. currently, Jack in the Box, two tacos. That is exactly what inspired me, because so you were good. talking about being hungry, and you're like, what am I going to do? And then so you're just good. like, I ordered like six tacos, and yeah, it was fine. You get, you get two orders of two tacos, four tacos, you're out like three, less than three less bucks. Less than three bucks at Jack in the Box. For those that don't have yeah. Jack in the Box, I'm sorry. It's an amazingly swing for the fences fast food chain so mine and it was because you had mentioned hunger and then you texted me like jack-of-the-box tacos correct I which i also mentioned like. hunger yeah i know right wendy's baked potato i love the fact that i can get a baked potato from a drive-thru it is a perfectly adequate baked potatoes potatoes are cheap they actually do freeze fairly well so they're easy to distribute not that wendy's freezes anything but they're they're uh, uh, easy enough to distribute. Have you never had a frosty? So those are made with a liquid um, a coolant, just so they aren't actually frozen. They're just they're just in a state of solid matter. I think we have different definitions of frozen. So frozen is a Disney film from 2013. Frozen. <laughs> there you go. Um, no, uh, but this is empty. I, I love <laughs> the baked potato. Is so good because it's. Number one, if you'd ask like 25 year old Steve, like, what's up? What, it, like, do you ever feel like a baked potato is something you're gonna get from a drive thru? I'd be like, you are insane. Why would any drive thru chain do a baked potato? Uh, number two, because it's, it's, it's very something. filling. They're very filling and they're a side. So they're a little more expensive than the tacos, but they're also more filling than the pair of tacos. Um, That's fair. So they're like two something, they're two and change. But like, even if you're just like, you're just like, man, I just need like a light breakfast, like something to just get me out of the hungry place because my lunch is going to be correct. Or, or you're like, I skipped lunch. I'm on my way home, but dinner's not like two hours, three hours out, right? It's, 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 it's going to, dinner's not coming soon. It's kind of the perfect size to be weighty enough 
and I love it. It's also a pretty decent potato. You know, of course, it's a fast food place. You can get sour cream, you can get cheddar, you can get onions on it. You can get chili. You can get chili on it if you want to make it more of a meal. Um, you, can you can get bacon bits on it. You can fries in it. You can, you I've can, heard that's popular. You can, you can take it and then put a bunch of fries in it and make it like a potato porcupine that you then consume. Potato pine. Potato pine. Uh, a, an eighth gen Pokemon. A potato por- pine. A porcutato. A po- I like porcutato. So drive through snacks. The two tacos deal from Jack in the Box. No one does it better. Close. They are not authentic. Um, no. The baked potato from they, Wendy's. They bear almost no resemblance to, it, uh, to an actual taco. The ba- <laughs> None whatsoever. Might- also, they do have a weird ex- like time limit when they're oh, yeah. fresh. You got to get them. You incredible. just eat them. The moment you get the yeah. bag in the car, go to the taco. Once do not wait until you get home. Can we also do our non-chain cheap snack equivalent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. All right, my two go-to non non-chain snacks. Uh, my local Korean grocer, Buhan, yeah. has a little vendor that's set up in there that does two things beautifully. Mm-hmm. They do ombap, mm-hmm. which is uh, it's it's essentially it's like onigiri, but it's the Korean version. It's like triangle kimbap. Oh, nice! It's just like rice wrapped in like super crispy nori, like wrapped in plastic inside of it. So you pull it off, and now it's up against the rice and still freshly crisp. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. They got like kimchi and beef. They got tuna and they're all amazing. Two bucks a piece. The other thing, if I want sweet, they do fresh hoduck, which is the most perfect. It, I don't even, I have no words for this. It is a sourdough yeasted pancake. Okay. They grab a ball of yeast. Mm-hmm. They take this mixture of cinnamon, sugar, and nuts. Mm-hmm. It can be any kind of, sometimes it's walnuts, sometimes pecan, sometimes with peanuts in it. Mm-hmm. You just smash that in the middle of the the, the ball of dough, yeah. close Very it up, useful. and you put it on a griddle in oil, and you squish it flat, and you just hold it down, and then once it's golden, you you're done. Put more oil, turn it over, oh. and squish it flat, and it's just this incredible, like, perfectly golden fried sourdough chewy pancake with this just perfect cinnamon sugar nut goo. That sounds oh goddamn fantastic. Two dollars. <laughs> Fresh made from scratch. So this is incredible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do one because we're close to the holidays. Yeah. Warm Beach, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Warm Beach, which is a hilarious name for uh, right. Washington anything. Frigid. And Frigid so Shores didn't have we, quite the ring to it. We we <laughs> went there. You had told me um about the food game there. Mm. And I believe you'd mentioned corn dogs there. I would have mentioned the mini donuts. Mini donuts. Mini donuts. That's that's yeah. the thing. Uh, I, we ate like six things there. Um, so all of it was good. All of it was like top shelf fair food. Like oh, yeah. better than most fairs. Fair like, food. Imagine if like all of like the families from your mom's church each cho- chose like a fair stand to run for oh. food. Yeah, and it, yeah, not it's like someone who really gives a shit making fair food for yeah. a, like at a event they care but about. But the mini donuts <laughs> really cool. were outlandish. The elephant ears were super good. The corn dogs were good. My favorite thing about mini donuts is that they're tiny elephant ears. Yeah, it's... and the best thing about elephant ear is that it's the it's like like it's so enormous but it has so much surface area. Yeah. When you eat something fried, you want surface area. You want and the crispy edge. Yeah, you want you want the skin. It's it's just fried skin. It's all skin. It's just fried skin. <laughs> it's so good. That's that's why it's probably these called. These are an our opening. snack recommendations. These are our snack recommendations. <laughs> try the fried skin. So what speaking of, try the fried skin. Chicharrones are delicious. <laughs> Yeah. Cracklin is always delicious. But we have candy to eat, don't we? We do have candy. We do have candy to eat. We have the Thanksgiving candy from Lofty Pursuits, Public Displays of Confection. Greg over on YouTube, Uncle Greg. <laughs> I, I fucking love this channel. Yeah, I know, this right? This dude makes, not only makes candy, but also will give you, like, the history of the flavorings. He met mm. up with uh, Dr. N- uh, Nadia Bernstein, who is a doctor of the history of flavors. That's a very narrow yeah. field, but I like it. Yeah, check out the new grape video or the grape flavor candy. They talk about like methyl and thranolate as yeah. the thing that makes American grapes taste different and gives them the foxiness. Yeah. Apparently the word for that. Great channel. Lofty Pursuits. Go check it out. This is Thanksgiving flavored candy. So these are some some interesting flavors. But it's one of those... It, I This feels 
better and different than like a Jones soda. It's a grass flavor. It's sweat yeah. flavor. It's a turkey flavor. You know, this guy gives a shit about the flavor. Like he really tested these. Yeah. And uh, like he is interested in the science of replicating flavors. So. Chime in on. Uh, yeah. Let's just go ahead and get some like random ones to see what comes out. Yeah, let's let's see. All right. So I got. Oh. Let's start with some normal ones. <laughs> I know these. This these is uh, cranberry sauce. Let's see if I can get it close up here. This is image candy. Right, what do you got? That is. I'm just gonna put apple it in my apple pie. Oh, oh, apple pie. What a. All right. What, what an under- apple pie first. Yeah. Mm. Immediately feels like I'm drinking spice cider. Yeah. It, so. I'm not against this as the flavor for the candy, but this really should have just been called apple cider. Yeah. Uh, spiced apple cider, because it's what it tastes like. It feels like a dead ringer for apple cider. Mm. I would be impressed if this was the, supposed to be the apple cider flavor. I would smoke this in a hookah yeah. instantly. One thing I really appreciate, it has, um, like, it does have that cinnamon oil flavor, mm-hmm. that, like, a like a cinnamon trident gum. Yeah. But it also, it feels like it does have, like, some of the, like, cinnamon, cinnamon flavor I as think, well, like, that you get from, like, horchata or something. I think it deliberately from. has that flavor. Okay, okay, what else we, we got? We should also acknowledge um, how much everyone loves mouth sounds. So the premise of this show. Oh, yeah, this is it's wonderful. Ooh, we both have pecan pie. Oh, yeah, let's get into the Here we go. pecan pie. So we went apple pie, now pecan pie. Okay, I couldn't see the fl- the, the image before. It's sort of a, it's a pecan pie with a, like a pan with a slice. A little slice. Cool definition on the individual nuts there. Mm-hmm. Good, good definition on the nuts. <laughs> good, good, good nut, nut definition. Definition. Man. All right, it's coming. It's coming slower because yeah. the apple pie. You're like that was fucking instant. Uh. instant it, t- it hit my tongue. Felt like I was drinking apple cider. This one's a lot more gentle. Well, and I know he does the different colors, different flavors sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm. No. So when I bit into it, I'm getting a lot of caramel corn. I'm gonna bite. Mm. Getting a lot of caramel corn, which is not wrong for apple pie or for pecan pie. It's not wrong. Um, it tastes right. There, but is, there is butter. There, you know. Yeah, there, there, there. It does have that as a layer. I really got no actual it nut. Definitely flavor has some to it. actual butter flavor. Yeah. Yeah, but pecan pie is a hard one. Yeah. And I. We take we 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 ate through a bag of these. Yeah, this is not our first this rodeo. This is not a reaction. Was a review. No, no, this is a review. Either. But I, I think pecan pie was the the only one I noticed that didn't feel like it. It really hit the flavor. No, no. But also, pecan pie is one of those things that's like, you know, everyone's pecan pie tastes completely wildly different. different. Yeah. Um. So how can you really? Yeah. So really maybe that's average? what somebody's pecan pie tastes like. Yeah. And Greg eats uh, frequently. What else? All right. Make? I don't think we have any more matches. We got this one. Oh God! All right. Is this stuffing? This is stuffing. So. Oh God! This one. All right. This is the most challenging. There are a number of savory ones. Every one of them is good except for stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's mostly because I don't. I don't know. I don't like onion. I don't like cooked celery and stuff. Mm. And it definitely has notes of onion and cooked celery in it. Yeah. Now, Which you have to. You need to have it, to replicate stuff. So, I just don't like stuff. And dressing. Sorry. Specifically, he said. Oh, this is, is as it, the side dish, not like stuffed into a bird. It's like, okay, so I whatever. think stove pop blurred the line on that because they, yeah. they, they they're like stove pot, stove top stuffing, and uh, and I never understood for years because I was raised by television. I never understood that stuffing actually went into birds. I just assumed that some because I saw it like everything else that came out of a box and was easy to cook. Oh man, can we talk mm. about this? Because I don't yeah, like shit. Mm. I don't like onion. Mm. Definitely has like some green onion flavor. I think. Yeah, it's the green onion is very specific, green onion. but very dressing specific too. So accurate. Yeah, it has. Uh, I mean, it, ha- it tastes like stovetop. 
It does. It really does taste. Like, it tastes it, like stove sop with less salt, which is it makes sense because it's not a can. Yeah. yeah, and that wouldn't go. I don't know if this is just stuffing I'm used to, having not been regularly eating stuffing. Mm-hmm. I'm not into it. It. I don't know. It doesn't quite have the the broth flavor. It no. tastes like a bouillon flavor. <laughs> it's all the um, like the powder flavors, like the, the the seasoning flavors and the edge flavors, like the celery, like the green onion, without having that bread base that's supposed to be soaked in that broth. Wait. That's really holding the whole the whole bread stew of stuffing dressing together. Yeah, it's missing the bread taste, but also that description is almost exactly how I des- how I would describe the chicken pieces in the honey brunches of oats chicken and waffle cereal. Yeah. They had that, they tasted like all of the flavors around fried chicken. It tasted like breading that was well seasoned and like chicken skin, but it didn't actually have was, like flavor of chicken. It was basically like if chicken yeah. ramen didn't actually hit chicken even as as poorly as it does, yeah. but further stepped away. Yeah. With but that Manchurian, that Manchurian, roast. yeah, chicken ramen, because it's yeah. more roasted, but Interesting. all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. What else now we don't have any matching. So what's this one? Um, that is Merlot. What All right. I don't Merlot? like wine. So yeah, let's see if we can we can do this. Because sometimes you don't like things in one fashion. Like I don't like Ooh. it as a beverage, but I might like it as a candy. Like I love root candy. beer as a beverage. I hate root beer as candy. Put all these stuffing back. <laughs> Get those stuffings out of your hand. My hands are already so sticky. It's trying to be a little wine glass. It's doing the job if you know what it's trying to be. Yeah. You're not going to get that out of Wonka. Out of Wonka Candies. Little designs. I just got a flash of um, Protestant Communion grape juice. <laughs> little grape juice shots. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's coming from the outer shell, maybe. Mm-hmm. Just a little like, grapey sweetness. Mm-hmm. yeah that's definitely i think they went they're like how do we do wine and they're like well we'll do grape because wine i think the middle has more of like a like a dry like body of wine flavor mm-hmm. but i'm really liking it actually it's nice you don't often get uh such a complex or unique flavor from a candy that isn't like overly just like sweetness well or like super rich yeah right? you get a lot of complexity in candy flavors also. yeah yeah unless they're like confectional chocolates and things like mm-hmm. that where it's like that's the palette for complicated stuff no um so ooh, ooh. a little fizziness yeah the fizziness is real nice right that's cool um so merlot don't like the beverage do like the can i would eat like a That's little, good. little like lifesaver sized roll of these candies of Merlot candies, I'd be happy with that. I think, I think for the fizz, they mix citric acid and sodium bicarbonate yeah. in baking soda, and then when it get wet, they kind of. Yep, that's them. that's that's that is the classic fizzy concoction. Cool. That has been making mouths fizz with things for decades. Yeah, that's a really interesting flavor. There's almost like a note of like cereal to it. A little bit of cornflake over Kind of. Kind of. It's throwing me. But I'm I, like... Overall, I'm into it, though. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah I like it. Um, ooh, do you have a butternut squash? The green and orange? No, but I will get one. I cut half of a butternut squash. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually really on the nose. Yeah. So, I don't like butternut squash. Another thing. So I don't... So I do. I, I like a lot of... Uh, are like I like mm. stuffing, and I like mashed potatoes. And then I like ham, and then we we pretty much ran out of Thanksgiving food that I like. Um, I don't like <laughs> really? yams. I don't like butternut squash. I don't, you don't like sweet potatoes. I I at me in the comments. I hate sweet potatoes. They're garbage and they're offensive to potatoes. Bro, I will just roast a sweet potato for dinner for sometimes. Oh, so there it was a nightmare. This is so interesting. It it. It really nails the butternut squash flavor. Like, I wasn't prepared for it to really give me the, or kind of the earthy squash gordy background. Earthy. There's an earthiness. Like, I want to say vegetal, but it's almost more like, like a musky so vegetal. If you, if you eat the stuffing against the butternut squash, 
you're going to see how they modified the same flavor for celery as they did for butternut squash. Because that's it, they're in that place. And I can definitely taste there's a similarity. I can taste that. But whatever it's mixing with is working with it better than the stuffing does. I wonder if it's the same molecule in celery so much more that's like a little bit part of the... Yeah, because because butternut squash, hmm. because there's obviously going to be a little bit of a... Or less of a need to make it taste like a vegetable. Yeah. Um, you can be real light with it, but it's in there. And I can definitely... I didn't identify that when we tried the first bag, but now I understand. I'm like, okay, so I would love to know what that flavor is. It almost tastes like celery, cinnamon, and sweetness. Yeah, but it works. It, but, it, it but that makes it taste as, as butter butternut squash. squash. Um, so That's so interesting. That's such a weird... This is such a weird yeah. candy. This okay, what else brand. we got? Damn. Oh, I'm into that. <laughs> ham. 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 So, Sorry, ham. I have, a, I have a five-year-old. We make reference to Ponyo saying ham a lot. I'm sorry. You have to watch Ponyo. Ham. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not the best one. There's better ones. Um, so, ham. Ham is good. Um, ham is uncanny. It... I, it feels like a ham. It, it, it straight it up tastes, tastes like candy like ham. Yeah. ham. Yeah, it tastes like you're eating just like a sweet ham. Um, and when I say sweet ham, I don't mean like a sugared ham. I mean uh, like a honey ham. I mean just like a like an adorable ham that's like real. <laughs> I meant honey ham. The kind of ham you want to call sug. The, the kind of ham oh, that you just want to give gifts to. I can taste the skin of the ham. Yeah, it's Specific. real good. It's real... Like, if you're not into a sugary meat, you're going to hate it. But if yeah. you like honey ham, this is just honey ham, honey baked ham in yeah. a candy. And um, it's smoky without it being overpowering. It's the most Wonka feeling I've ever it, Yeah, it is not. It doesn't taste like liquid smoke. It doesn't taste like fake, like ham flavoring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Wonka level, like sorcery. It's way fucking cool. I'm, I'm so into this one. Um, Yeah, so this one's... This one's pretty top shelf. Um, uh, let's do God. let's do one more. Let's let's. I know there's others, but let's do one more. If we've hit we've hit more. we've hit the peaks and the valleys. If we're doing one more. Which one are you gonna give me? We gotta do sweet potato casserole. Oh, you so oh my! You God. know I don't like sweet potatoes. Oh, are you either. serious? I forgot. It's okay. This was my favorite one. It's okay. We're gonna get into it. That's not... ooh. All right. What up? Oh, here we go. How about I do the sweet potato casserole? You can do uh, corn candy. Here's sweet potato casserole. Also, one of the best pictures here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You want it with your more steady hand to show the corn one off? Word. Sweet potato casserole. Now, when I originally tasted this, I don't know. It's so much of flavor and perception is like just mental mm -hmm. like like the physiological response to yeah, memories like, and references it's like when you go and you think you're gonna drink a glass of something yeah that, and 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 then you spit it out and you're like oh my god and it's not something you dislike it's just not mm -hmm. the thing your mouth was ready for one of the things they talked about with that grape flavoring thing mm -hmm. is that they found out neroli which is orange blossom oil mm -hmm. was a source of this same chemical that makes grapes american grapes taste grapey like concord grape jelly mm -hmm people from Europe who have never tasted or smelled American grapes at that point, they had just associated, they smell it and they thought, well, they go, oh, that smells like orange flower oil, orange blossom oil. So, and yeah. so that was how they found like, oh, this is what the chemical is. Because someone smelled orange blossom uh, perfume. Yeah. Uh, and, and they, they were, were like, like oh, this is American grapes. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so as you were getting to, so much of this is mental. So the first time right. when you had this, yeah, first time I had this, it tasted like what I'm used to, which is sort of like a mashed sweet potato with like a brown sugar and cinnamon and like a crunchy nut streusel yeah. strudel thing on top. Yeah. But he was specifically saying in uh, the video, Greg from Lofty Pursuits, mm -hmm. that this is based on a southern like marshmallow candied yams. Style. Which I definitely remember from it. That's how I identified it because that's the kind right. of yams I've always had. 
Well, and now tasting it again after having seen him say that, I can definitely taste the marshmallow. Yeah. For sure. Which is very subtle. This is the most subtle marshmallow flavor I've tasted. It's almost well, usually like they go so ham with it because it's just... Right. It's it's, it's like everyone likes marshmallow, so... Yeah. Um, it's good. Corn, on the other hand, uh, is real simple to define. It's got a little bit more depth to it, but if you've had buttered popcorn flavored jelly beans of any kind that's what corn tastes like um it's not quite like the roll which tastes straight up like buttered cop popcorn mm -hmm. and there's definitely a sweeter factor um i think they leaned into the sweet properties of corn because it's a candy um uh it's a thousand percent times better than candy corn so don't eat candy corn eat corn flavored candy the butter flavor really is a, like an overwhelming component of flavor it's, it's hard to have that in and anything present, else yeah but not overwhelming especially yeah. because it lingers in the mouth uh there's a buttered roll on this right there's, there's a, a dinner roll to it. yeah the dinner roll yeah which uh, similarly to the apple pie i didn't really get any of the bread component no no you just get the butter on that I mean, that I is straight up yeastiness that is yeah. straight up popcorn flavored but um mm -hmm. but better jelly beans non-jelly belly brand jelly beans that do a popcorn come closer to the corn flavor on this uh because they give it that corn hint that popcorn has and strangely enough it doesn't yeah. taste at all like kettle corn no, which it doesn't which I would have thought, I mean, we mentioned, I mentioned that the pecan pie kind of had a kettle corn or caramel corn flavor on the end of it. it I was super expecting like kettle corn golden, flavors. Golden syrup flavor. Lofty Pursuits, Thanksgiving candy from Public Displays of Confection. Yeah, yeah, bring it up to the camera. Logo. Lofty Pursuits, uh, you can watch Lofty Pursuits stuff on YouTube. You and you watch. should. Do they have a separate, like, is, is the podcast That's independent of the YouTube or are they pretty much the same thing? No, yeah, totally independent. So, yeah, so yeah, it's the the dude just kind of talking about like stuff. behind the scenes stuff about the video trips mm -hmm. he's taking, stuff he's working on, things he's researching so, that don't make it in, or kind of extended things from the research he did for like factoids in the video. But, uh, if you like our snack adventurism content uh, and you want to keep following us, uh, dying of exposure, uh, you can like and subscribe to the YouTube or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. And, and, and get into it. Or the web, dyingofexposure.com. You're Steve. I am Steve from uh, Dying of Exposure. And you are Josh yeah. from Dying of Exposure. Also I'm known as Kloffenbach. Also known as Steve. Um, That's spelled right here. So that you can yeah, yeah, I'm it. There we go. Uh, if you're in the Seattle area, I'm playing a free show on December 7th at the Fred Wildlife Refuge. Seattle's full of fucking hipsters. It's a bar. It's a bar. It's got, it's got a stage and a sound. It's called a wild, it's Fred Wildlife Refuge, but it's the after party for HushCon, which is like a hacker convention in Seattle. Mm -hmm. We get this show every year. It's going to be fucking amazing. It's a free show. So come on out. I get paid Drink. no matter what. Michael Kill is going to be here in from, from the Carolina mountains, <laughs> the Appalachian Hills. The Appalachian Hill country. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Dual Core mm -hmm. flying in. I, I don't, he's probably not flying in from Cincinnati. He's no, I'm sure he's coming in from globe trotting, Mister Worldwide. Yeah. Uh, we got Fuzzy Nop. We got uh, other folks that I haven't met yet. Yeah, and um, I have a harder time remembering their remembering names. their names. But they're going to be amazing. Yeah. MCO Mai is also playing. Yep, and he's dope. And he's very dope. Yeah, and then on December twentieth. Yeah, on December twentieth at the um, Cafe Red. Uh, in southish Seattle. Yeah, right Southern. by the Othello light rail station. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I am playing uh, as Steve, and uh, you are playing as Cloth and Pop, and MC Omai is playing and celebrating his birthday. And we're all releasing albums at we, that show. N I'm not. Never mind. Um, I'm releasing an album at this show on the 20th. Mm. It's called Cold Out, mm. and it's got uh, like a King of the Hill cover. It, it does. It's, it's very good. It's a thing. Ring the bell. Uh, 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 yeah, ring the like bell. You have to hit, uh, you want notifications, and then you have to decide how no many notifications. Wants, no one wants notifications. I get go, so follow, many. go follow us on, on just follow Twitter us. And shit. No, no, follow us on YouTube, but just don't. Do you not have a Twitter? I do have a Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's attached to the Facebook. It's all, it's all. At dying of, of exposure. At dying of exposure. It's always dying of exposure. Nice. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Branding. Um, we're going to go out like they do in the news. Or like, or, or a talk show where they like lean in and talk to each other, but we're not going to make noise. Oh yeah. Or yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we can because I can just mute it. Oh. But it's like, oh yeah.